be very sad. Okay. Hello, my name is Chloe. I'm the daughter of Anna Ong. Today, I have taken over her, cha her little channel here and I'm making a video yep. to, to say to say something Oh, my daddy or my uh. <laughs> Recently, my nanai she is in the hospital. Mm -hmm. She she is having cancer. Mm -hmm. She's on the last stage. We are all very sad because Holy Oh mommy. Oh, be ah. careful. Ah, don't touch it. Okay, yeah. Uh, mommy. mommy just lit a candle. Okay, yeah. What was that? So Daddy Kevin? is watching you. Yeah. yeah. Hi Florence. Thank you Florence. Thank you. Auntie Florence. Thank you Auntie Florence. Thank you Auntie Tristan. Tristan. Mm. Well, I'm here to share about how sad I am that about my nanai. Because my nanai is having cancer stage 4. She's in hospital and she's not doing so well. Mm. I, and with the coronavirus now, it's just very... All of us, we really can't. You don't have to look at me. <laughs> you can continue on with your All videos. of us, we cannot handle the, the pain and sadness. Because. How is your Nai Nai now today? Nai Nai. Yesterday, she was still able to respond to us. Today. And talk, right? She cannot even talk. And she cannot look at us. She cannot respond to us. So I made a suggestion. Yeah, maybe made a good idea. She said maybe Nana can write what she wants, what to, she say. wants to say. Yeah, because she will a bit when she cannot speak in her mind. Today I was talking with my auntie and my papa. My auntie and my papa. And they said that they are going what? Today we went to her house to collect the things that she likes, like her favorite T-shirts. Say cool. nice things about my life. Mm -hmm. And okay. I'm really sad to lose my life if I lose her. Why? Uh, hello, daddy. Hello, daddy. Hello. Tell Explain me. why you're sad. Because. Because. Nana really put a lot of time mm -hmm. and effort into me and Mimi. That's true. Thank you, Shirley. Thank you. We all thank you. Thank you, Auntie Shirley. Me and Mimi is too young to understand, so she doesn't know what's happening right now that much. I've been crying quite a lot lately. I don't understand Nanai Chinese that much. She put a lot of effort and time into us. She put our family at first priority. No matter what, she will always come for us. Mm -hmm. At first, we thought it's pneumonia. Mm -hmm. Now it's just escalated by a whole bunch. Mommy, why are you off the light? Oh, sorry, sorry. Why are you off the light? Sorry, sorry yeah. You, you okay. We're well, explaining about Okay, back to my stuff. sad story. Okay. <laughs> Now, now I'm laughing, but I really cannot bear to see my nanai at looking so curly like that. What else did nanai do? Us? Daddy, uh, nanai. What did nanai, nanai do? What did she buy for us? Nanai, she will always give me one dollar to put inside the little thing and buy like little Pokemon, <laughs> Pokemon figures and stuff. Then it went away. Boom, gone. Yeah. So it, I don't know where it went, but yeah. I really thank her for giving me so many one dollars. She must have spent a lot of money on that. Mm. What else did she buy us? She also buy us a lot of panties. <laughs> cute panties. Yeah, very cute panties. Which is very essential. Yes, very essential, like my essential oil. And Hi, we're not Shirley. Hi, Sheila. So, 
my my dad. I feel really bad for him. His his mother. his mother is in hospital. My ma my mother is also my mother as you know Anna Ong. I mommy, I mommy, that I've mommy taken come. over today. Mommy come in the camp. Mm-hmm. She's very, first. in the last few okay. years she's gotten very close to my grandmother and that night. And it's just we really cannot bear to see her go. We really, really don't want her to go. But as my Ayi said when we were talking to her few few hours back, she said it's better to let her let go peacefully than to let her live painfully. Yo daddy says hi girls. <laughs> Say hello daddy. Hello daddy. daddy. Well no Oh yeah yeah yeah. We were packing we were packing our favorite things. Wait, I said that. Sorry, my memory is really really bad, so <laughs> you should eat some packing of the things. Packing her nut. favorite things, but how do you know which one is Bread. her favorite thing? Because yeah, I always see her so wearing you can it and stuff. Okay, so back to the things that she did wait for us. She would always buy us things and she oh oh what type of even, food did she give us? Oh yeah. She she bought us Lee and Apple. She always cut them, not even knowing if we would eat them. And then put them in the nice little boxes. Mm-hmm, cute little boxes. She taught Keep me how to chill for us so that when we mm-hmm. get home from work from school, we get to eat them cold and nice. Oh mommy, I can know that you lit yeah, the one. It's okay. I'm drinking my water. Oh, no. And then I'm going to Right now I just I don't know what to say because I still like cannot believe I'm doing this. I still cannot believe like uh, why does life have to be like this? Uh, life is just struggles. Yes it does. Okay. Can Nanai, I be in the cam? Nanai, can you can you face No, me? maybe you're not you're not famous like me. Mm. <laughs> yes I am. Well I'm gonna shift. Sherry don't fall off, huh? Be careful, Sherry. Well, I will. She would always bring us Yoshinoya and she would she would let us eat a lot of things. Even though mommy like say don't spend so don't much. spend so much on us. She would she gun. She, she she doesn't care. She will still spend on us because she loves you. She loves us so so much. Sometimes feel like she loves me even more than my mother does. I mean, yep. We yep. Can't True fact. To let her go. We don't want to be selfish. But we just cannot. Baby, do you have anything to say? Mommy is behind the scenes crying right now. Yeah. I'm go- I'm going to cry right now. I really, really, really cannot bear. I don't know why that. Mm. I mean, have, I know it's. Sad, I don't have much to say. But I just. I don't, feel that, I don't know why. I don't feel that sad. I hope that a miracle happens and she can leave, but it's very <sighs> unlikely. No one can tell what the future's gonna come, what the future's gonna be hold. I probably need to go to sleep soon. Tomorrow yeah. I have school. I just have to keep living my life. You don't like it. I, I just have to keep living my life, accepting the losses and learn to learn to understand the cycle and was that an ice cream truck what what is that sound well, i really just i don't know what to do i'm not I sure if do. next time i might go into depression she died.
please don't. I I'm your just... sister. You're still here with me. <sighs> my whole family right now is feeling a wreck. Yep, no one can hear me. No one knows what will happen. We all just... I hope that anyone New watching this can relate with, with us. And I hope that if you really can relate with us, please pray for my Ibanai. Pray that she will get better and she will keep living her life in pain. Either she dies peacefully or she lives peacefully. I just either one. I prefer the second one that she lives peacefully. But right now, really, no one can tell what's gonna happen to all of us. And then we have this like world ending situation on our hands. It's just. Yanni, yeah, would you like to take over? I think you have a few things to say. Can you bring him here? Yeah. Uh, Mommy, I I'll think it's your turn. Yeah. It's so it's so far back. Uh, okay, is this fine? Mm-hmm. Daddy says, "Be strong, Chloe. I never want us all to be strong. Don't no waste the efforts that she's put in for all of us over the years." The past years. Trust me, Daddy. I'm really trying to. Uh, I think I need to shift the. Hello everyone, this is Clan Century. The reason. The reason why mommy hasn't been posting lately and uh, not working so much lately is. We've been going Hello everyone, this is Clan Century mm-hmm. Property and uh, oh, I have not been doing a lot of live videos since about December after I come back from my hol- holiday in Korea. Yeah, and that's about the time I realised that someone very close to me has not been feeling well at my home. And that's my my very close mother-in-law. It started off with sometime last October or so, in year 2019. And that time she was complaining to me about some pain um, at the front here, under here, her rib cage, and also at the back of her, and uh, some pain on her back. Then she started coughing really badly. And after she complained to me, I tried to check on the online symptoms tracker and found that she is, she might be suffering from pneumonia. And I said, why not? Why not I bring you to see the doctor? My mother-in-law is 68 years old this year. And and, and she she was she was like saying never mind it's okay. I I already seen the doctor and usually she's someone who's very responsible. So she will take good care of herself. Yeah. She'll go and see a doctor. She'll go polyclinic she has to her regular like, checkups. She has her yearly checkups. Yeah. And and she always makes sure that if there's any medicines that she needs to take, she'll do it. And so she did. She did her regular checkups, her routine, and everything. She got everything checked, and she told me it's fine. Uh, doctor has given me antibiotics, so it's okay. I I I I am fine. She complained to me several times, and every time she told me that, I said, "Come, let's see a doctor. Why not accompany you?" What happened was, before I left for Korea, on the thirtieth of November, I remember. Last year. About a day before that, I said, "Why don't, why don't I bring you, why don't I bring you to see the doctor in the clinic or in the polyclinic or maybe in the hospital, right? Don't go alone." Then, she says it's fine. She'll take care of herself. Don't worry. Just go for my holiday. And so I I went. I went for my holiday. We were shocked that about two days, two days after in Korea. 
I can't remember, is it the 1st or the 2nd of December? We call her, we video call her from she Korea because we found, we found a suitable pair of bedroom slippers yeah, for her and it was you, really cute and we thought one, yeah. she might like it. Mommy, so we video one? call her, yeah. The Shirley. Yeah. So what happened was we called her and then she didn't pick up the phone. Afterwards, she video called me back and asked me, do you know where I was? I thought she was at my home. But actually, that time, she was already in hospital. So, from 30th of November, I was in Korea, all the way until about 15th December, I came back. The worst part was when... when no, she doctor... was actually hospital, uh, hospitalized two times okay. in Sengkang General Hospital and... Nothing was found and she was released after one day of stay each time. After I came back from the holiday, I managed to see my mother-in-law and she appeared to have slimmed down quite a lot and I was very shocked and I asked her, Mother, did you, did you actually, did you actually um, took any slimming pills or any weight loss program? She said no. And I said, okay, um, did you lose a lot of weight? Because I saw that you have slimmed down quite a bit. She said, no, I only slimmed down like 5kg. But in fact, she slimmed down like 8kg in few Yeah, I wasn't got over. So weeks. I asked her to stand on the weighing scale to show to me. And I was shocked to find out that she had lost about 8kg. In how many days? I think it's lesser than two months time she lost around 8 kg because she was coughing badly and she was like vomiting all the phlegm constantly and she couldn't sleep well she was really unwell yeah so girls that think you're fat stop praying that you will lose so much weight in two months <laughs> no lah sometimes some people when they take slimming it does work but the thing is that um for, for for the old folks we have at home, right, they always think nothing of their illness and and they always feel that they, they are strong enough to overcome everything, they are mature enough, they are responsible enough. Yeah, so what happened was... Yeah, sorry. So after I... Am I back here? Something is wrong. Something is wrong, right? something wrong oh the lights off okay. okay sorry so after i discovered that she slimmed down so much and then she told me she wasn't feeling well she wants to rest and then she went back again and she told me don't worry i have antibiotics i'm eating antibiotics then i did ask her if she wanted any supplements she said no and for december right uh, usually she's the primary uh, caregiver to my children and for December right um, after I came back from my holiday right she was always telling me that she's unable to take care of my kids she's unwell she needs a rest and since there's only two weeks um, left from mid of December to the end right I thought why not just let her rest for holiday maybe she's just in the holiday mood but um, things didn't really go that way so December, she didn't seem to get on any better and lost like so much weight and then she couldn't come and take care of my children for me and January came. January came and children needed to go back to school and I was feeling something is not right because she wasn't able to come back and help me take care of my children to fetch them from school and coach them for schoolwork. And it went on uh, one one to two weeks in January and I discovered that maybe something is really very wrong because to me my mother-in-law has always been the best caregiver to my children she's the best butler in my family <laughs> she takes care not just of my two kids she also takes care of my home for me and she even takes care of me and my husband like my children said she'll cut the fruits she'll bring them food She'll buy them food, she'll buy them sometimes snacks, tidbits. Yeah. So, during January time, I sensed that something was really amiss because she kept saying she's tired and she couldn't come. And there's days that she promised me she'll come to my house, fetch my children. She didn't come. And then that's when we decided maybe it's important that we really must escort her to the hospital. 
And so on the 13th of January, we escorted her to do the x-ray. And the x-ray um, showed some like, um, some, some white, had some white lines or, or dots okay, on the lungs. I was quite shocked to see that. I was quite shocked to see um, the x-ray having spots on it. Because my, for myself, my grandfather died of lung cancer. So, and I was also shocked that that time when we did the x-ray with her, it was already the fourth x-ray she did so far pertaining to her cough and vomiting. And it happened that on the 13th of January, on the 12th, she suffered a fever. Yeah, so, so what happened was after that day of the x-ray, right, we seek the, the, um, advice of the doctor at the clinic and ask him for a referral letter into Singapore General Hospital and that's when we had her check into Singapore General Hospital on the 13th and about a week later she stayed in the hospital right uh, we were told that in fact the first three days the doctor said she suffered of pneumonia so we were still like thinking oh pneumonia with Singapore's kind of medical help right i think pneumonia should be easily solved you know so i told her mother don't worry just just uh enjoy your stay here you know and get well soon then whatever you want to eat i will bring you out to eat or I'll, i can cook for you later don't worry so long as you get well again right and she told me that i can't take care of your children maybe for months i said fine it's okay if you cannot take care of my children for months i can manage that you know don't worry I'm not so worried that time. Three to four days into the hospital, doctor said she got pneumonia, she got water in her lungs, and eventually said there's pus in her lungs. And so we, we thought, okay, fine. I think I have met someone who had pus in the lungs and water before. So maybe they had to drain that water away and they had to drain that pus away. Right? It's pneumonia, right? I think on the... 7th or ninth day into the hospital, can't remember. Doctor says she had, she had cancer cells in her lungs. And the cancer cells, they are still not sure if it's going to be uh, which stage yet. But they suspect it's stage 4. On the ninth day or so, they confirm that it's actually stage 4 lung cancer. At that moment, we were all quite shocked. And then doctors said, okay, maybe take this uh, chemotherapy. That's the only cure perhaps around for cancer. There is a chance maybe. They, the, they saw that she's pretty healthy in a way. And she doesn't look like her age. She's 68. A lot of people thought she's like in her 50s. So she's a very jovial person. And when she speaks, she has got a lot of energy and drive. So... The doctor said, how about chemotherapy? And suggested some tablet to go along. And if there's a mutation, then she could possibly live on for another two to three years. Maybe we were just overly optimistic. Maybe we were just too greedy. Maybe we were just too positive. We didn't see it coming like, hey, stage 4 lung cancer is really going to die, right? It's going to die. It's going to die like, we don't know when. And so, my mother-in-law um, agreed and decided to take on the chemotherapy. She went on for the first round, which was on Chinese New Year's Eve. So last year's Christmas, we didn't have the mood to celebrate exactly, except for one day I invite a few of my colleagues over for the Christmas dinner. And I also felt something was quite not right because my mother-in-law didn't, didn't come over and she said she was unwell. And then for New Year, we didn't celebrate at all. And this year, I felt something was really not too good. And so it's kind of peculiar that for this year, I didn't buy any Chinese New Year clothes for my mother-in-law, nor my mom, or myself, or even my girls. I bought nothing for Chinese New Year. And after much pestering from my husband, I only bought him like a little bottle of egg rolls and I think the pineapple tarts. 
we didn't we didn't have the mood for it and we didn't know what to expect from this illness. Chinese New Year's Eve she did the first chemo. And the chemo is supposed to go on like um there's a cycle. So every month there's a cycle. So every week you're going to do one time of chemo and it's going to go on consecutively for three weeks. Three that means three times in total. And on the fourth week you're supposed to stop and that's completed one cycle. Yeah. So initially doctors actually said, Oh, they wanted to try like a six month kind of chemotherapy on my mother in law. Things got better after the first chemo. My mother in law suddenly was able to eat rather well in the hospital. And we got really positive. We got really hopeful. And we didn't see anything coming. Hello Zen, hello Lin, hello Jayla. We didn't see anything coming, anything abnormal. Okay. And doctor said, oh, she's reacting well to it, so she can go home first and come back next week for the next chemo. She went and stayed with my brother-in-law, where he took quite a good care of her. And then afterwards, which she went for the second chemo. After the second chemo, things started to go a bit downhill. She was having like fever on and off. She was like continuously vomiting. The vomiting didn't stop. And she was coughing badly still. And she lost a lot of appetite to eat. And she was still drinking that time. And so after that, waited on another week. The chemo was cancelled for the third time. And then after that which she was already sent back to the hospital and she was warded. I, I really cannot remember which day was that already. But I think to date she has stayed in for roughly about 1 to 2 weeks. And since 13th of Jan, since the 13th of Jan until now, it's just like barely 1 month plus. On Monday, we were told that by the doctors that Monday morning that she perhaps has about less than three months to live and Monday afternoon I got a call from my husband and then he says he's in the hospital and the doctor said gather all the relatives to come in it may be her last day that day that afternoon or maybe that night that was this Monday and then after that which Prior to this Monday, right, I actually visited her sometime last week. And then I realized that she can no longer eat much. She barely eat like two tablespoons of porridge for her meal. And she couldn't really drink much already. I felt something was really bad for her. And then for the past few days, she was still quite clear minded and she's able to give us instructions for her stuff her assets and everything to deal with the HDB, CPF, the lawyers, her will, uh, the painting and, and blah and blah. She was still very, very clear-minded. But last night, I think that was a, about the last time I ever really had a com conversation with her. Last night, I sang to her in the hospital. And then last night, halfway through, I cried in the hospital while singing to her and from the looks of it we know she won't last that long and then come today we visit her again in the morning after I sent my kids to school I realized that she couldn't open her mouth to speak anymore it's a very drastic it's a very drastic um, uh, change to us. Last night she can still tell me, Anna don't sing already, you're sad, don't sing already, don't sing this song, I'm gonna ban this song, so stop singing this song, okay? Don't cry. But today, I saw her squirming around in the bed and her eyes were like having that kind of dead fish look and her breathing was really bad. She was gasping, gasping for breath. She could. She was opening and closing her mouth to to breathe, but she couldn't talk anymore. 
and when you look at her, she couldn't look look at you exactly like holding your view, your gaze anymore. So I I told my family that I I think she wouldn't she wouldn't really survive for too long. But this came as a very sudden blow to us all, because first of all, we never expect that. Someone really healthy, you know, she's able to eat McSpicy chicken, you know, from McDonald's. She always accompany us to eat at Caesarea. We always bring her out for food, for shopping. And just months back, I brought her shopping, you know, in Suntec. And she was so happy. And she walked all around, checking for, for stuff, you know. She wanted to buy a bag to go for a wedding dinner. Just months ago, she attended wedding dinner and asked me if her pink color top would match her black pants or not. Just months ago, she asked me to bring her, uh, you know, maybe shopping so that she can choose the bag she wanted and, and buy the bag. And then, it was just like a month or two ago, I was doing my podcast training or yeah my podcast recording and she helped me with my children she volunteered and my husband was working late she was helping us still looking after our children at home I, I, I just cannot understand how a person could just go from they can just talk to you today and and just like a few weeks later and they're really at the deathbed and now she really cannot cannot really talk to me anymore I, I think I have been her daughter-in-law since 2005 I married my husband and we had many disagreements in the past because I was a new daughter-in-law and she was new to me and we didn't see eye to eye on a lot of things but for the past recent few years I started to mature a bit you know I started to understand why she said certain things to me and asked me certain questions that I have never thought of asking I started to embrace the changes, I mean the differences between us. Like sometimes she'll ask me like, why do you do things this way? Yeah? Why you do things this way? I, I, I won't do things your way, you know. I will do it this way. So then later I realized that this is just her way of communication because everyone is different. Everyone communicates differently. But I was so foolish. For the past how many years, if you calculate, since 05 and now it's the 15 years I would say for the past 11 years I haven't really been able to understand her as a person and notice how amazing she really is to me okay what really touched me is that um, I remember I was really sick really sick last year and and so was she. She was like coughing as well. And then I bought a lot of herbal tea to brew at home. And she helped me brew the herbal tea. Yeah. So I was really touched that she helped me brew the herbal tea. And it takes a lot of patience, isn't it? And not just that, you know. She's meticulous. After brewing the herbal tea, she helped me transfer all the tea into bottles. For me to carry around and after cooling them and not just that she filtered the drink to to screen off all the all the sediments and she said oh i'm afraid that if there's any sediments in it right your throat will feel really itchy and you will cough again frankly i was really really very touched yes i have people who brew tea for me brought it to me took a transport or I have people who did herbal tea for me but the way she does things is really one of a kind she will really uh, filter it and, and some she'll keep in the fridge for you and say oh if you want it cold there's a cold one inside if you want it warm there's a warm one right here if you want it hot there's someone in the pot 
she basically took care of everything for me. Then when I was doing my live videos, she'll be very supportive to watch it and, and give me her feedback and tell me that she enjoyed it the next day after. On days that I don't do my live video, she would tell me that, eh, how come you don't do your live video anymore? How come you're not doing it anymore? Oh, because I was sick. Oh, then she would say, oh, uh, what happened to you? You know, you want to see a doctor or not? Things like that. I remember there was one time I was doing a live video and feeling really, really thirsty. So I asked my children to bring me a glass of water. But the person who brought me the glass of water wasn't my children. It was actually my mother-in-law. This is just one of the little sweet things she's done for me. But do you know that every time I go out to work and she was there, she will check me for my outfit. I'm the kind of careless person. Sometimes I'll forget to zip my dress all the way to the top from the back. Yeah. And sometimes um, I'll forget to button up my sleeves down here. And sometimes there's like strings to be tied, like ribbons and stuff. I'll just do a fast one and I'm ready to get out. But she'll be the one to help me tie the ribbon on my sleeves where I can't reach it. Tie the ribbon on my back. Help me zip up my dress. Make sure everything is impeccable before I leave the house. To the extent, right, she will even help me charge up all my, all my portable batteries. So that when I go out for work, right, she will always have a spare battery there for me fully charged. And there are times that if I left out anything at home, I just have to call back. She will help me find them and, tell, and take pictures of them and say, ask me, is it the one that you wanted? When I cook, right, she will taste the food and tell me whether she likes it or not. When I cook, she will stand outside my kitchen and watch me and keep me company. So, after I cook, and before I cook, she'll help me prepare the, the, the ingredients. After I cook, right, she knows I'm tired because I'm standing there for many hours. So she'll help me wash up everything and clean up everything before she goes home. Then sometimes I volunteer to send her back and drive her to Pongo. She'll say, it's okay, I can go back myself. Even though sometimes it's really very late. I, I, think, I think our parents, or mother-in-law or father-in-law, they really don't have that much time for us but they always make us their priority and that's how we always thought oh she'll be there when i get home right she'll be there when i bring her out for dinner she'll be there when i have time for her but actually it's not that we are busy and we don't have the time it's rather that they don't have the time for you they don't have the luxury of time to wait for you every time because when when you turn around and you think, I have time for you now, mother, let's go out for dinner. That may be the time she's really unable to eat anything with you anymore. Just like my mother-in-law. We've had many conversations. There was one time I was really angry over something and she knows it. And I said, don't depend on me. Don't depend on me if... Touch wood if ever there was a funeral. I'm a Christian. I will. I will promise to be very nice to you while you're, while you're alive. But I cannot promise you that, you know, during the funeral or whatever, I will patch things up with the other person which you wanted me to. But I will be very nice to you when you're around. But I think I, I have to break this promise now. When she's around, I will. I, I was very nice to her because 
she has become more like a mother to me than just a mother-in-law. But when she passes on, right, I will help her do her funeral together with all the rest of the other family members and patch up everything nicely for her. I, I don't know if you all have your parents who left you before, but this is... She is a mother I never really had in a way. When I knew my husband, right, I was very impressed that I feel really warm and fuzzy that she is able to like... She's, she's always offering uh, cakes to me or she's always offering to make me breakfast to bring to work. And when she knows that, after I share with her that my colleagues like the breakfast she made for me, right? She makes even more and bring and, and, and give it to me to share with my colleagues at work. When I was working in the law firm, she makes a lot of cakes for me as well. So, for me, I'm I'm really a cake lover. So she makes a lot of cakes for me. She didn't know that I'm a cake lover actually, but all these little things right adds up to to someone really. You can't really forget. For my children. She has never, never said no. She has always been relentless in her giving to her children. She has been relentless in her love to us. She doesn't hold back. If she feels that she can, she will give it all to us. I'm sorry if I made you sad, but just want to share how great she really is to us. And how how sudden life can just be sucked out from someone so healthy and jovial and lively and bubbly just just one moment and that's it things could just change in a matter of days so don't be too busy don't be too hard working don't be too much of a workaholic your quality time is also very important. When you have the time, our parents or parents-in-law may not have the time anymore. So cherish the time you have with your older folks at home. Take note if they ever cough that badly or suddenly the weight drops by a lot. Really, really is a big alarm bell sounding out. Yeah. So tonight, that's my sharing. The takeaway is to really pay attention to the people around you, the people that you love, and not just wait for me, okay? I have no time for you. I'm very busy with work, you know? Next time, I'll do this for you next time. When, when you have that next time, your loved one may not have it for you. Okay? So, thanks for hearing me out. I hope I'm not boring you or making you feel really sad. Okay. Cherish your parents and parents-in-law and your spouse and your children, your family members. Okay? So, good night everyone. Plant-centric property, signing off. Bye!